I'm going to stop sharing that right now. And I'm going to get rid of the poll. So hello, I'm Michelle Walfred. I'm going to take off my camera, but I just did, I did want to say hello to everybody and I'm going to uh, mute, mute myself on camera. And um, I'm a communication specialist at the University of Delaware. My major uh, was in journalism. My graduate degree was in a journalism history project that was digital. And um, so I've transitioned, I would say around 2012, 2013, really started moving into social media. And uh, I've received a, uh, um, an e-extension fellowship from uh, e-extension in 2014 to study how Cooperative Extension uses social media. And I'm also a 2014 graduate of the University of Delaware's Social Media Strategic Marketing Certificate Program, which was a 15-week immersion into social media. So that's kind of become my bailiwick, um, having always been more interested in writing was my, my thing. Um, we want to thank our sponsors. So if you see any of these organizations, we're a cooperative, fully cooperative, cooperative extension that we work with a lot of extension offices in this region. They make this possible. Our, our colleague, my colleagues at University of Maryland are the ones that house these, the archives. And as I've mentioned, if you're just joining, we have three, three years worth. And someone's got a, um, if, the, if you could, please uh, mute your microphone uh, until we get to the question part. And so, they make this possible. These are free. Um, all of the archives are, are available from three years ago. So if you see any of these organizations, any of our sponsors, just say thank you. I'm going to be doing the next one on the 28th, and that's going to be on media law. And hopefully Paul Geringer of the University of Maryland, he's an attorney, will join me on that. He will at least vet my presentation. But that's going to focus more on what images you can legally use, what sound you can le legally use when you're producing content videos. A lot of people are uploading content they buy on social, uh, buy on iTunes, and you can't really use that. So we'll get into that more in two weeks. So I hope to see you there. And I'm going to do this up front because what I'm planning on doing here is going live with this. And, but I wanted to create a few slideshows on PowerPoint so that you would at least have something you could download and look at. But this is more of a demonstration today than it is going to be a scripted webinar. Um, because really to see how these apps work, you have to go live. And Zoom allows us with um, some glitches occasionally, allows, us, allows me to show my device screen as I'm talking so we can demonstrate that. So. The other thing is please contact me if you have any questions. I'm very impassioned about empowering people to use whatever um, technology is out there, particularly if they're advocating positive messages for agriculture or agricultural stakeholders or for cooperative extension. And we can set up, I can set up a thing like this and we can do a one-on-one -on -one over Zoom. We can look at things, share a screen. So please feel free to to contact me if you have any questions about that. So what we're going to do today is talk about why visual content is so important on social media. And primarily, we're going to look at Facebook and Twitter, which is a personal favorite of mine. Also, Instagram. I'm on everything. I had to be to take that course. Um, we're going to narrow that down, however, and review two apps. And I'm going to go live with that. One's called Word Swag and the other, other is called Adobe Spark. And they've risen as the two best out of a field of many. And I, I'm showing some of them here. This is a uh, word swag, Spark post. There's others that do. And of course you can put, you can upload a photograph and you can put it into PowerPoint or Publisher or Paint or any program you want and add text to it. So you don't have to have one of these apps, but these apps are pretty snazzy and they're pretty neat. And they help us storytell. So if any of you are in retail or where you're direct marketing to, to, to people, if you have a roadside stand, if you have a creamery, a winery, you're selling goat milk, uh, whatever aspect that you're doing to, uh, that you're involved in, 
um, going on social media and saying, we've got this for $1.99, come here this weekend, sell, sell, buy, buy. That's not really the best way to, to gain an audience. Nobody likes that hard sell. You can use it once in a while, but you can use images to create emotions and create feelings, and that's how people remember you. And I'll weave into this a little bit of social media strategy, take it or leave it. And then we're gonna do a live demo of Word Swag and a little bit of Adobe Spark. So think about your feed. Now this is a Twitter feed and I, I brought this up. This is a nonprofit that I deal with on a, or our extension deals with on a regular basis. I didn't wanna reveal who they were, but this is their Twitter feed. And I don't know what they do on Facebook, I really didn't look, but on Twitter, this is a no-no. This is, this is bad. This is, um, there's no images, um, and every link is, find me on Facebook. If you are on Twitter, and Twitter's an important platform to be on, because it's where other extension offices are, whether ag, other, other ag businesses and ag industry is, it's also where there's funders, it's where our legislators, our governors, our senators, both state and federal, and it's also where reporters are, big time. So getting exposure from them, tagging them, letting them know what you're doing and what's going on in your world is a terrific way of communicating. So I'm a big fan of Twitter because of that. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are the big three. Pinterest too, they all have different audiences to them. Facebook's going to be your family, your friends. If you have a page business, maybe other pages, it's your, some of your potential customers. They're going to be moms and grandmoms and dads and grandfathers. You're going to have younger people and more diverse people on Instagram. You'll have all the other stuff too, but that's where they are. And then of course, Twitter, as I've mentioned, a lot of your influencers are on Twitter. So you shouldn't treat them all the same way. And a really big no-no in social media is to post once and have it auto-populate on the others. And you can do that through Hootsuite and TweetDeck. You can do it if you're on Instagram. You can send it so that it goes out to your Facebook and goes out to your Twitter. Generally speaking, that's not a good idea. And any social media pro will tell you not to do that. You may think of that as being a, a time saver but you're gonna turn people off because they're gonna see the exact same thing on the exact same platform. And you really need to know who those audiences are. And someone, if someone doesn't have their microphone muted and I'm hearing a lot of background noise, chewing and tapping and all that. So if you could please mute your microphone. Thank you, I don't know who that was, but Terry, I think maybe Terry, all right. So that's my lecture. So images, simple images work best. If you ever were in 4-H or took a photography course, using the rule of thirds helps, which is the main, your main top, your main subject is usually on the left or on the right. It's not smack dab in the middle and you'll see how that works, but there's, you can break those rules. You wanna respect the copyright and we'll go more into that in our next session on the 28th. But if you use original photos, if you can, so anyone in your family or any of your friends who take pictures, ask if you could use them. Um, but you can get public domain photographs. And uh, I use Pixabay, so pixabay.com, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, that is 100% public domain, which means you can do anything you want with the pictures. You can turn them into uh, modern art, you can change them up. You don't have to give credit. You don't have to give any kind of attribution. You can also go to creativecommons.org and get a mix of, of pictures, both where the license is relaxed. Uh, I have a Flickr account. I have maybe 7,000 photos and I would say most of them are botanical. And I would say 95% of my photographs have an attribution license, which means you can go on there, you can download it, you can put it in your blog, you can put it on your brochure, I'm fine with it. The only thing you have to do is say photo by Michelle Walford, courtesy of Flickr, courtesy of Creative Commons. So you could search for me um, and, and other photographers through Flickr 
uh, and we have uh, some talking. So I don't know if the co-host could mute. I might have to break in and um, uh, mute people here. Sorry, but I, I, it's hard for me to talk with that muting, that talking going on. Let's see here. All right, I think we're okay. I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute everybody. Continue. Okay, so that should work. So simple images work best. Um, and there's a lot of options where you can get your photo photographs. If you are taking a picture of a, of a, per, a human being, you'll need to have a model release. So if you have a customer or a client and you wanna use them in promotional materials or for an ad, you must have a model, excuse me, a model release. Universities have them. You can download them. You can search for them online and adapt the language for your business. But you cannot use a picture of a person, particularly a minor, without permission. And get it in writing. And now I want to. Okay. So what's a meme? Um, I use this term often, and this is what we're talking about. These were the most popular memes back in the day where some mother or parent or grandparent took these two little pictures of their babies and they shared them on the internet and they didn't mind. And what happened is they just took off because of their expressions and their hand gestures, they became memes. So this is the original version of the word meme where people would take a photograph that, that there was a license for there or that was donated to the internet and they put their own captions, usually in very blocky um, uh, fonts like this. And so this is, this is typically a meme. You may have also seen these, the most, I forget what he's called, the most wonderful man in America, the most fabulous, but anyway, you see him all the time and people put um, their own captions on it. And of course, Grumpy Cat is internationally famous. His memes took off so much that he has books and calendars now and his parents, owners, I guess, are making a lot of money. But that's what memes were originally and we call them memes now for our business. But uh, we want to use visual content. The average person has anywhere between three and eight seconds. They have a very short attention span. And if you're posting content on social media and you're not using an image, excuse me, or a video, then you are losing their attention. You're not getting the most. You're also competing with a lot of others in a very fast paced world and they know the value of visual content. If you are on Facebook, long text written posts where you write a paragraph, even if you've gone and put a picture in, anything long like that with a lot of text usually means you get less engagement, less people see it. Facebook likes it short. Even though you can put 200 characters, 300 characters in there, um, they will treat your feed better if it's 75 characters or 80 characters. A lot of people don't know that. Twitter, of course, is famous for being 140 characters. And it's one of the reasons it's so popular is it's very short and succinct. Also, Facebook, if you decide Let's say you're having an event, you're having a workshop, you're an extension professional, you're having an irrigation workshop. It's a week out and you only got 10 people showing up. So you, you have it on Facebook and you wanna boost it. If there's a lot of text in your paragraph that you've posted, or if there's a lot of text on the image, you've uploaded a flyer, for instance, Facebook will not let you boost it. And I boost posts all the time for five, 10, 15, $20 tops. I can reach thousands and thousands of people and I can target that. So Facebook um, ads is, or not ads, but Facebook boosting is a very useful way to get your word out. It's very inexpensive compared to newspapers. But if you've got a lot of text, you're gonna blow it. So forget the flyer. So here's an example of a Master Gardener open house we had last year in our uh, research and education center. And there's a lot going on at this event. Now, th what you're looking at on the left was something that we emailed to people. It also was a print ad. So we sent this out a little higher resolution to our local papers. So it serves well as a print ad. But if I tweeted that out, and I did, you don't get a lot of action from it. It's just not, and if you put that on Facebook and say, hey, everybody come to this, 
and then later you want to boost it. Facebook would not let me boost this because there's too much text. So if you have flyers, put them on your website. You want to direct mail them, email them out, that's fine. Put it on a postcard and mail it, that's fine. But something like this does not belong on social media because it's way too much text. So what do I do? If I want to go ahead and promote something, what do I do? So I, take, I took the most important parts of this event, which were making bee houses or bee condos. We also had a children's garden, so we wanted to promote that. And we wanted to promote um, our, all of our workshops that we had. So this is what, what I call a meme. So this was a photo I took, the Master Gardeners created a uh, bee house that they put into a mailbox. So this was a bee hotel and this encourages native bees, um, masonry bees as opposed to carpenter bees. Use, use these tubes and little holes to overwinter and it helps with pollination. So I use, so this is again, really this is like a rule of halves here. But the rule of thirds or rule of halves is nice because you want to have like a, a more subtle area to, to overlay text. If I had moved that text over and put it over the um, actual reeds and twigs and limbs, it wouldn't have been as effective. But against that dark green, it stands out more. So this was used using word swag and we're going to go over that. But I just wanted to show you the, oops. And I'm on a map I'm here. I'm going to go back. So that's what that was one thing. So I pulled that out and I tweeted this and put this on Facebook several times. And I may have spent five five dollars or ten dollars. And people came to this event just to make bee houses. So doing that was important. But I also said, okay, this was a part of the children's garden. This was the hopscotch area. So hop on over to our open house, don't skip the children's garden. So this was just another aspect of what all the many things that were going on. And this was used both on um, Instagram, not Instagram, excuse me. This was um, Twitter and Facebook. And the reason these are popular, if you're using Twitter, you're going to have, you only have 140 characters. So if you're using all that space, to say where, who, when, where, what, why, then you have nothing left. So you can overlay some of that essential information over the photograph, but people get the idea. It isn't just visit, the words visit my children, visit our children's garden in a feed, they see an aspect of it. So there, it's more inviting that way. We also had many, lots of mini workshops going on. So again, we wanted to show it's going to be a hot day. Hey, you can sit under the shade. You can look at our mini workshops and we put the date and the time. That left me space to not have to put the date and the time in the actual typing part of my social media post. I was able to maybe have room to tag somebody and I'll have some examples of that. So these were all done with word swag in the case here. I did it two times. You go in, sometimes you can't fit everything you want to say in one fell swoop. You have to do it in bits. And so this was a two stage word swag. Um, here was a beginner farmer series on irrigation. So it just, I went out and shot an irrigation picture and I put the date and what it was called. And so then down, and you can actually see the actual Twitter, I was able to tag because I saved space putting this information over the photograph in an artsy way. And then that gave me space. Okay, I re reinforced the date, but I was able to tag our local Delmarva Farmer newspaper. I was able to tag the Department of Agriculture. You could tag people, so it gives you space. And then there was a link which goes, which doesn't show fully here, but the link to find out more information and to register. So that's what you do. You don't want to put the flyer up. We had a flyer for this event that went out to farmers, but that's not what I use on social media. Um, you can also do logos. I am a volunteer moderator for National Ag Chat, which is every Tuesday night. And uh, 
So this was a shot I took in Delaware. I used uh, two, two stages of word swag, and then I overlaid it with a transparent logo for the Ag Chat. So if you have logos, you can add them to, um, to word swag and um, they can be transparent or if you have the logos that have the white box, that will work too. And you can position them anywhere you want. So this is an example where Ag Chat was doing something on uh, grain safety, which is a big, big reason for fatalities and casualties in agriculture. So I had the transparent of Ag Chat. I didn't have the transparent for the sponsor of this particular workshop, so I just threw that in. And then I used Word Swag and I used Red to really make that. And this was a picture of a silo I had taken, or I think maybe I got that from um, Pixabay. So that's how Word Swag works. Um, these are definitely the um, resources you want to use for Creative Commons. Is Creative Commons and there's different search parameters. You can say I want photographs that I can use commercially. So um, you, you will limit your your results that way, but you can. I want pictures that I can turn into black and white or I can do things to them. That's called the deviation. Um, so if you want to do that, then you click that box. If you want to just I just want a photograph, you can get a lot more. And again, I like Pixabay. Um, here are just some other examples. We had a 4-H series on, whoops, my mouse, sorry about my mouse is so touchy. Okay, um, so 4-H did a series with another organization to promote um, drug abuse. It was National Prevention Week. So this was a picture that I downloaded, uh, the, the boy and the girl from Pixabay, and I used word swag for the take pictures, not drugs, check out, 4-H photography project because they were taking pictures. Hey, here's something you can do instead of drugs. You can do you can do photography, and then we added in the 4-H grows here logo, and then you can see the actual tweet below, and that could have been a Facebook post just as easily. Sometimes when I go when we when you go live, if you're using Facebook Live or or Twitter or Periscope Live, it's really important that you let people know ahead of time that you're going to be going live. You get more followers and more people will tune in. So uh, today, hey, we're going to be at this farm tour. Check us out on Facebook. I tweeted that, but it let people know that they could go to Facebook and find that. And then it also went out on Facebook um, early in the morning. Um, again, this was a, that was my photograph of the cow face. Here's a Pixabay photograph of little feet. And we took take the first steps to prevent drug again. It was all part of that um, that plan. And then this was just something really pretty. So you have plums. It's a we're having a fruit pruning workshop Saturday, March fourth. So something like that is it, people are going to be more inclined to pay attention to it if you've added some type of an image. Um, this will be downloaded. I want to have time to to actually go on these things, but. You can also take the photographs and turn them into paintings. You could turn them into modern art. Um, you can turn them into a watercolor, an oil painting. You can diffuse them a little bit, add your own little funky or cool style to them. So some of my favorites are right here, Waterlog. I, that used to be iOS only. Brushstroke is both Android and, and um, iOS and Pris, Prisma and I said Prism here, but I meant Prisma and Tangled FX. These are these are, I think are free. Brushstroke might have been four dollars. I think Waterlog is five or four or five dollars. Very very inexpensive, but you could take a a stock photo of of strawberries and turn it into a watercolor, and then you've put your own mark on the photograph, and it's more original to you and for overlays. And then for for color, when I create collages, I like these here. My favorite is Diptych. Uh, all of these are free, and then they, they constantly ask you to buy more more layouts, but I just ignore those. So this is a this is an um, example here of going to Pixabay and finding peaches. So maybe you're in orchard, and you're going to have peaches. So you could say peaches are going to be half off. We're going to have an open house, and you can put a price on it. 
but feeling. So find a quote. I, I went online and looked for famous quotes about peaches. You might find a very famous poet or something from literature. But Greg Allman just died recently from the Allman Brothers. If you're into Southern Rock, you'll know who I'm talking about. This was his brother, and they had, had an album called Eat a Peach. Well, you could do that. So you could, even though some of your customers might be Allman Brothers fans, so why not put a picture of this on just to let people know, hey, we grow peaches. You don't have to sell it directly. It's, it's letting people know that um, you're, the, what, what you're all about and you're cool because you know a, a rock, uh, it's not even a rock lyric, but I quoted him, and I did, again, this was using word swag. So let's keep our fingers crossed now. I'm going to stop my share for a minute, and then I'm going to go back on, and um, this works 99.9% .9 of the time, and sometimes it doesn't, so I'm going to share my screen, and I guess I could real quick look to see if there's any questions before we go on. Um, let's see here. Hit the chat pod. Has audio started? Hopefully you're all hearing me. Okay, so some people are using Unsplash. So great, please share if you're using something else. Um, I, I think it would be great for everybody to know. Um, that would be terrific. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm gonna share my iPad. And every once in a while, this is, one of the reasons we went from Adobe Connect to Zoom was it lets you do this, which is really nice for tutorials about apps. Okay, so now you're looking at my iPad and I'm gonna press home to unlock. All right, all right, there's my email, okay. So here's my meme creators. So we're gonna go into WordSwag. <laughs> And WordSwag partners with Pixabay, and I mentioned Pixabay before, and it defaults to where you can uh, take a picture, you can, um, or you can go and use something that's in your library, or you can click more. If you click more, all right, that's just going to bring you to something else. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit the photo icon. So these are the some of the Pixabay backgrounds and they're all square. Um, and if you want to use square format and used to be that when you're on Instagram, you had to use square. That's not the case anymore. You can use portrait or landscape. But any of these, these are just some samples that you could use. I generally speaking, don't use these. So I'll go to my camera roll and I'll hit, I'll tap on the top and it's going to come up to, to my particular set of photographs. And I'm just going to go look through here. And let's just say I'm a nursery and I sell a garden center and I'm selling, uh, I can sell pond plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click this picture of a water lily. And it will default to square. And you will see at the bottom, which is really, really nice, you will see that it gives you some pre pre-cut so if you were looking specifically to redo your facebook cover photo or your twitter header photo um, it will give you those um, pre-cuts so or a facebook post that's perfectly sized for facebook post um, i normally don't do that because i tend to mostly do twitter but when i do it through twitter it works on facebook so i normally don't that's just my preference but you'll have to um, play around with this. And I should mention that the Word Swag is, I think, $5.99. It's both iOS and Android. It is the best $6 you'll ever spend. Um, when, I, when I first got it, it came with maybe 12 presets, and it since has upgraded about a year ago. It upgraded and gave me another 30. You'll see them all, so you'll see well, well worth it just for its speed and convenience. Excuse me. So I usually skip this. Oh, and it went too, I hit it too fast. I'm going to go back. I am all fingers today. Close. Okay. So there's the photograph of the water lily and it will, re it remembers the last, um, style that I used, or I think it may, even if you haven't used it in a while, it'll default to this one. 
So what I want to show you first is, is no matter what style you choose, I'm tapping now on the double tap me to change text. And I want you to notice if you can see the dotted lines at the top. So it's taking like the top eighth off and the top bottom eighth off. So it's called a Twitter preview area. Hopefully you see that, especially over here in the dark. That is where if you're going to go on Twitter, uh, you, want, you don't want to be putting anything above those lines because Twitter previews. So when you're looking at a Twitter feed, you'll see just that part of a picture. If you double tap on it in Twitter, it will open up to the whole thing. But if you're trying to trigger people to, hey, click on your picture or pay attention to your post, you want to get your messaging within their preview parameter. So this is nice. It gives you that um, guideline. It also centers it for you. And I have found that when I do this for Twitter, it works beautifully on Facebook. So there's really no issue um, with it. And so then down at the bottom, within every style, so let's just say here that I'm a, a, a garden center. I'm going to double tap this. And then you can hit the X over on the top right. And then I could just say um, all all water plants, 50% off this weekend. And hit, and hit close, save and close. It's gonna tell you we may not be able to reproduce that percent sign, in my experience it always has, so I just say continue anyway. And there is the text, but I really don't like that big white blocky thing. So what you have down below is you have a series of numbers. So if I were to stay with that style, it will give me five presets. But it also gives me this little roll of the dice and that will just scramble it all kinds of which ways. In my experience, you get about 20 options within a style. And but I really don't like that. So you can look across the top and you can see that you can, and then I can pinch it, I can turn it, I can move it over, I can do whatever I want with it. And that's just a simple pinching it on your device. So all water plants, I don't really like the way that lays out. So I could play around um, with what the roll of the dice gives me until I find something I like. But I just want to let you see that you can get quite a bit on here. That's not too bad. It will give you the preset. So I'm typing now down at the bottom. Two, three, four. You don't get much of a choice whether something's going to be capped or non-capped. That's going to be up to the program. It will also not wrap or break the way you want it to. So that can be an issue some of the time. You can also go in, so we'll just stick with this a little bit because that's kind of pretty. And what you could, could do now is go into color and they will give you presets so I could make that black. Obviously I wouldn't want to do that because I would lose it unless I moved that over here. But you can change the color. You can have you can see mis, um, gradients. You can have solid colors. You can also have mixed colors. So here it would rotate between black and white and you'll see it has that little crossbar in the middle. So you just keep hitting it till you get the one you like. I don't want any of those. I want that color. Kind of, to me, it washes it out, but you can go through the whole sequence and just to kind of tap, tap some of the, here's one that's got a whole spectrum of colors. So you can make this as big as you want or as small as you want, or you can decide not to use that style. You also can, if you notice while you're in color, you can make this transparent so you can change the opacity of it. And that's really nice if you, um, are using some of the other styles. So we'll just stick with this for a minute. 
and I'll just show you some of the other ones. So they get very, very fancy. And you gotta be careful, you do want them to be readable. Here's, here's square. So you can kind of do something like that, but of course it's lost. So I could put that in the middle, but I'm blocking my photograph now. So I could go back to color and I could really bring that transparency down. So it's really cool what you can do with this. Now, what if I wasn't selling something? So I'm gonna go back and as long as you don't save, you can go back anytime and edit. What if I'm an extension agent, and I'm a horticulture agent, and I'm doing a workshop on water plants. So we're changing it up a little bit. So now we have a topic, a time, and a place. So I might say here, water garden workshop. And it's going to be today, it's going to be June, and it's good to say Wednesday. June 14th. I'm going to skip the year. We're just going to figure on that being intuitive. And we're going to say it's going to be here at the Carvel Research and Education Center. And I'm going to hit save and close. So now I've got this. Um, so you, it's not I don't know that I really like that. I'm going to go back to style. I want to show you some of the ones that are pretty cool. Punch Out was the one that I used for the bee hotel, which really worked great because it was holes being filled by bees. Um, I don't know that that works for this particular one. Shout Out is fun. So here's one where you can... Um, emphasize certain words, but to me that's not very readable, um, especially the word carvel is there under that bullet. So I might go back to uh, color and just make that white. You also have a, um, so you can get a very specific shade if you want, if you want to, but I'm going to go with white. So that shows you what it looks like there, but you may not want um, a particular word being emphasized. Sometimes it doesn't work well. It's working actually pretty good here in terms of the 14 may wrap with the word research, in which case you have to split this up a little bit. I was hoping that I could show you an example. Um, here's, here's a great example. So here, I like that style, but it says Wednesday, June 14th, Carvel, and then it separates Carvel and research. So in a case like that, you have to what you have to re-swag it. So I'm going to go in and tap this for a minute, and I'm going to take out everything except the title of the event. Water garden workshop. So it's really letting you know. Okay, it's water garden workshop. Uh, I don't know that I want that particular style water garden workshop. Hey, I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that. Um, while, I'm, while it's saving, be aware it is, um, it saves to a huge file. For some reason, when it does that overlay, it makes a half a megabyte photograph into a four megabyte photograph, which isn't a problem unless you're using Hootsuite. And I'll, I'll get to that, remind me to show you how that works because Hootsuite has a file limit, a size limit. So I'm gonna close and then I want to re-swag. So I'm gonna go back in, it's going to, it remembers what I just did. So I'm gonna ask it to re-swag. Now I can't, and it will remember the style that I used. I can't touch this now, this is, this is part of the photograph now, but this one I can. So now I want to go in here and I want to change that. Now I want to put the date. And so I'm going to say Wednesday. So you have less chance of having something break or not wrap the way you want to. And I might want to put that over here. Or I might, might not want it all in one big blob. I might want that, gee, I'd like to have that all on one line. Is that possible? So let's see, you just kind of, that works, but I don't know that I like that. So I might just keep going. That works. To me, that works. So I would just center that. 
it's in keeping with the style. And then I could go back and I could put the location in if I want. Or um, in this case, I won't, but you get, you get the idea. If, if I wanted to do the location, I might want that all the way down at the bottom. Um, let's say that this was a, a photograph that you borrowed from somebody and you want to give them attribution. So I would go back in. Okay, it's going to come in again. I don't want to use, I want something more subtle. So I'm going to pick a very plain, this one's called Ultra Clean. And I'm looking for, I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to say photo by Michelle Omalfred slash Flickr, Creative Commons, comment, something like that. But that's what you would need to do if you're using an attribution license photograph. And as long as you do that, you're covered. Um, it's going to say, it doesn't know about that dash. I want to say continue anyway. So there it is. I just want that real small. And I don't mind if that's below the preview. As long as it's on the photograph, I'm covered. So that can be real small. I might move it over here. It wouldn't be very readable. But that covers me legally. I've given credit to the photographer. So you can re-swag, 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 and re-swag and get many, many layers. And the only really main reason for doing that is so that you can position exactly where you want your statements to say. Um, once you're done, you hit save and it's done. Now what you would want to do, if I wanted to add a logo, so if this was now add a logo, add a watermark, I would go in and tap and it's going to say, yes, I would like to have an image. It's going to say, it should be a, a transparent, it works best. I got that. I know that. I usually ping, PNG extensions are the ones that work the best. Anybody who has Photoshop, if you know anybody that can get you your company logo or your business logo, this should be, yeah, so there's 4-H and that's the ping. So if that was a 4-H workshop, I could put that right there in the corner and I'd be set and I'd be ready to go. Now, once I'm done with that photograph, I've got a monster size photo. So if I was going to use that in Hootsuite, I would go into my photo camera roll now, and here's all my iterations of working with that. Stage one, stage two. St so this is the final one. So I'm just going to go in here and get rid of all these just so I don't get confused and get rid of them. And normally what I do if I'm going to use Hootsuite, and I have to use Hootsuite when I work with um, AgChat, is I just go into Snapseed, which is my all-time number one favorite uh, photo editing app. I bring it up into Snapseed. It is an extra step. You don't have to do that if you're tweeting directly or you're going on Facebook. It's only when you're using Hootsuite. I tap on it. I upload the picture and then I save it and I export it. And now I have a much what, what uh, Snapseed does is reduces the file size. So um, now I can take that and they look the same. So if I go into my, I've got two of them here on the bottom left. But this one here would be the one that would be the one I could hoot sweep with. So that is Word Swag. Um, I don't know if there's any questions about it. It's just a fabulous. Um, I just wanted to show you more of the. Um, let me go back and just skip camera roll. Let's just do another one real quick. Uh, I'll grab a photograph of. A butterfly, okay, so I could say, all right, well, I'm doing an insect pest workshop. I could skip that, I normally skip. And I just wanted to show you some of the other, so I'm just going to go in here and it remembered the last one I used, I told you, so I'm gonna go in here, take that out, and I'm gonna say um, insect pest workshop and it's way too small way too slight so then you have something like that 
and you can see all the different um, combinations. There's paper hearts. They have some really cool Victorian ones. But these are beautiful for uh, putting a quote, putting a line of poetry. So if you're selling, um, if you have, if you're a garden center, look for what, Hawthorne or, or Emily Dickinson or somebody who's written something. And that's the kind of content you want to put on your Twitter feed, not just always what you're selling, but just things to evoke emotions and to kind of give your business or your interest a personality. So to me, that's very filigree for say something like an insect workshop, but there's all kinds of really cool, um, and you just have to kind of play around with them and tweak them, tweak them and all of that. So that is Wordswag. And there are some really cool. And so once I paid for the, the $5.99, I think originally it stopped about here. And then all, all of these over here are all brand new coming from the uh, upgrade, which was free. So it's just a really nice um, uh, program. The other application that if you're interested in some animation is Spark Post or Adobe Spark. So this was one I was working on. Um, it, allows, it allows you to do some animation. So it's particularly that if you wanna really capture attention, you can, so I've, I've worked on this one. I'm just gonna put that right here. I downloaded this, I just grabbed this off the internet. It seemed innocuous enough. So Green Acres Garden Center. So that might be your business. And when you're done, you can animate that. And it will play like so, and you can decide whether you want something like that. And it's just enough, it's just a few seconds for somebody to, to stop and take a look at it as opposed to a still photograph. So that's one of my main reasons for liking um, Adobe Spark. If you're gonna go back, these are some of these. So let's just go with a new one. So when you're looking at it, you will go into your photo library and it will ask you to um, pick a photograph. So I'll go into my photos and I'll pick a, I'll pick a butterfly picture. Maybe I'll pick, pick that. Maybe I'll pick um, that. And we'll add those three. And what it will do is it'll put it into a collage for you. You can, um, Okay, I'm not sure I really, it will also do what WordSwag does. It will auto fit it for where you want it to go. So if I wanted this to be my header on my, on my, for my event, I'm having an event on native plants. It will size it there, but I don't particularly want that layout. So you can touch the layouts and you can get different ones. So that could be a, if it's four and you only have three photographs, you're going to have a place for text, which is kind of nice. So I can go in here and I can move these around. And I might say, okay, that's fine. I'm going to double tap this and I'm going to call, let's see, I'm going to hit done. I'm going to double tap it now. I can go in here and uh, change the text. I don't use this one quite as much, but I'm starting to use it more because of the animation. So this might be native plant workshop. And you can resize it. I'm just pulling it with my fingers. I can change the font. Not, it's not gonna be nearly as fancy. You could go ahead and create this and not have any text and finish it off in the word swag. So I've done that too, where I've combined. Um, but you get a little bit more of the traditional um, font, but a little artsy, but not quite as artsy as um, I might wanna use purple. I like that. So I used to say that's fine and you're done with it. 
then you can go into animation and say, is there anything I can do with this? And it will give you some options. So there, they're just zooming in. So on Twitter, that's going to be impressive. Um, there they are sliding across. I probably would choose a different photograph up here at the top, top right. Here's a slide. So there's where Native Plant Workshop comes in. So at any point you could say, yeah, I like that, I'm done. But you know what? I wanna change the color. I wanna change the layout. I wanna change the design. And they're gonna offer you different kinds of designs based on templates without changing all of your work. You don't have to reinvent it every time. So that's kind of nice. And even though they give you a design, you'd say, I love that, but I'm not so crazy about the font. So you could say done, but you can still go in and, and change that font. Um, say done style. Oh. Font, there we go. So it's going to give you some suggestions, but you're not married to them and you can move it around, do whatever you want. You can change just like with Wordswag, you can change the opacity. In this case, I don't have a text box, so I wouldn't know that I want to do that, but I just wanted to show you that you can. You can really fade that in, fade that out. You can put a different shape on it. Well, I don't like that too much, but it just shows you what I want that. Oh, that's horrible. No, 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 no. So you, you have, you can see what it's doing. And so you just have to kind of play around with them. And what, how that works is, I'll show you with my Twitter. Um, it ends up looking pretty nice. So this is my Twitter feed here. Take that to me. Let me go to my media. So this was an example of one I did. Um, you know, it was just a little poem I wrote, a little haiku, and I put together but can you imagine if this was a business, whether it, you have dairy and you have pictures of ice cream and you say, you know, summer isn't summer until you've, um, you've had an ice cream cone at, at you know, Walford's Dairy. Or, so anything like that. Um, happy Mother's Day. Think of things that you can do in your business that maybe aren't directly related to your business. So you could be a winery. You could still say happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day, show a bottle of wine, show it paired with some cheese. And then this is not showing up, so I can't see it. Um, here's, here's one. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. So those were pictures I took out in my garden and it just loops, it just keeps looping. It's like vine in a way. Um, you could take this, you could import it into iMovie. It creates an MP4. Um, so you could import it into iMovie or any kind of thing like that and add a little um, sound to it if you wanted to or some nature sounds. But this is the kind of thing that you want to do in your business. It's going to make people stop and look at you when they're flipping through their feed really quickly. So this was, um, hopefully you got some inspiration. I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Um, I was only be able to touch on a few things within the hour, but I'll open it up to questions. Yeah, Snapseed, uh, so Jody is saying, Adobe Spark, and, and I think is desktop. No, but you can do it. I just did Adobe uh, through my iPad, so that is on a device. Snapseed is just a wonderful, all purpose photo editing and it keeps getting better and better. It's completely free. It's run by Google. Um, just lovely. And it works on, I, I have I, iPhones here. I have the iPad and iOS, but uh, WordSwag originally was um, iOS only, but it's since gone over into um, how, to, how to get the Twitter on picture. So, when you're in word swag um now both of the programs have what they call a um let me just get back in here okay 
Okay. Both of them have presets. So when you first open them up, they'll say, would you, do you want to create a, a, a Facebook? Facebook events are different than Facebook posts are different than your timeline post. My, I'll have to show you my, um, my Facebook page. I did a, a, I was just horsing around with it, but my, oh, cancel. We're not good to me. I did an animation for my, for my profile picture. So um, if you played that, I guess it's, I don't know why it's not playing, but it plays, it actually, yeah, won't do it. Anyway, so you can, you can animate your Facebook profile. It does work, I just don't know why. It's, it's maybe because I'm connected this way. But getting back to your question, with word swag, let's just go brand new. It's going to give you the presets down below. So this is saying, what are you using this for? And it will give you some options. A Facebook post, however, is different than a Facebook cover, is different than a Facebook event photograph. You can, you can um, boost events and you can boost posts. I usually boost posts. You get more, more for your money. Um, but this is, this is now for a Twitter header, not so much a Twitter post that I would put on my feed. So what I do is I normally skip this, and I would say nine times out of 10, I just go to the full frame photograph. And then once you type in a text and once you touch that text, it's gonna give you a preview area. So you will see that when you are in, so if I went down here, if I went and, if I went and saved that like that, when I would, if I were to go publish that, well, let me just go ahead and do it. I'll just go ahead and do it. And you'll see what happens when you go on Twitter Let's close. All right, so that's in my word thing. So I'm just gonna go in here, cancel. I'm gonna go into Twitter now. And I'm going to post that photograph. I'm just gonna say test. That looks perfectly fine right here. If anybody's following me on Twitter, they wanna know what I'm what the heck I'm doing. But now when you look at my feed, oh my gosh, I'm way down here. Okay. See how it cut off the word workshop? Because I went down below. So that's the that's the preview. If I click on it, it will open up for the full thing but it's the preview that's important on Twitter. And you will see a lot of people, and if you look at, at Twitter, you will see people are using images, big time, big time, big time. And I would recommend that you use as much as you can. Now here's somebody who didn't size it right. So on that preview, that word serve or service or serving established is cut off, heat, is that heat? Is it meat? So I, if I tapped on it, but this particular group of people, when they posted this online, didn't size it correctly. So that's a great example of, of seeing how they, they've got the right idea. It was better than nothing. But by putting all that on there, they, they didn't size it for Twitter. So you have to know your parameters. Um, so that's why I like the, the preview that, that WordSwag gives me. So hopefully that answered your question. Let's see if we have any more. And I'll stay on um, past, it's past one, but could you show how to get the Twitter information? Okay, can you, can you sh show, can you WordSwag to Instagram? Yes, but I would advise most people, and I'm, I'm going to um, search for a very popular company here in Delaware, Dogfish Head Brewery. We do, we put um, Dogfish Head Brewery. They, generally speaking, 
Um, and there you can see their, their uh, feed. They're not saying, hey, this is on sale. This is, they're showing their product, how it's used outside on a boat with pizza in a thing. They're not selling on Instagram. And this is, um, and, and Mariah did a great workshop in Delaware on social media. You don't hard sell. If you really want to sell and you want to be popular, you tell a story with your photographs. So if you'll notice, there's no, hey, dollar off six packs this weekend. They're not doing that. They're, they're just emoting um, what, what they've got as a product. Um, having said that, I'm on Instagram. If I switch over to extension, we've done it. Um, and so you'll see here, I've used, um, or I used it here for Ag Week Poultry. And that, if you notice, that was a photograph of chickens. I turned it into an art painting using brush stroke, which made it, just gave it a little bit of originality and then I said well we have this big thing called Delaware Ag Week in Delaware it's a whole week we have different sessions for different days so I did put that out but as a rule uh, Christmas time we said this or rather the winter time the winter season because it's not just Christmas it's uh, people celebrate in different ways so may the beauty of the season find you happy holidays from Delaware Cooperative Extension um, that was just a Pixabay cardinal picture, and I overlaid that on WordSwag. So for something like that, but we don't use it. The same thing for Thanksgiving. I used that, and that was WordSwag. I used to put a frame around it, so kind of burlapy, kind of fall. Took the picture on our farm, uh, University of Delaware's farm. Put that overlay. It was one of the... Um, fancy ones on word swag made it semi-transparent put it up but we're not heavy into do our workshop here do our work because instagram is we're on instagram to tell younger people about instagram and what we what a cooperative extension does so we will use spanish hashtags we will use spanish language um we will do it once in a while but as a rule of thumb and that i didn't I don't know if I did that one. That's not a very good one. Um, that's not really what I like to use Instagram for personally. Um, I'd rather put it up on Facebook. And we did a great, there's a couple workshops we've done on Facebook. Christy's done some, I've done some. But I really, I'm a big believer in boosting on Facebook. It's for five or $5. You can reach a particular zip code or a particular region or people who were have mentioned something. So as you can see, I've done it once in a while. There's one for surf safe classes. Just because I think our enrollment was down and we wanted to get more people. But if I do that, I don't do it automatically to all of them. I will maybe put it, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to put it on all three platforms, I'll do it at different times. Maybe on Facebook on a Friday. I might do Twitter on a Wednesday night or Saturday afternoon. And I might do, if I'm going to do the same exact picture, I might do it on Instagram another time. I never zoom them all out at the same time. It's just, it's not good. It's not a good practice. So, but by and large, that's not what I do with Instagram for. So if you have an ag related business, so if you're a garden center, winery, creamery, fruit stand, um, you should be taking pictures of your fruits and your vegetables and your product and people enjoying them. And that's how you sell. And people, I, it could be a poem about, um, tell a story. And the one thing about Instagram, just a mini lesson, you want to put as many hashtags on it as possible. So in the case of this butterfly garden here, um, you can see we, we did, um, Butterfly, Mariposa, which is the Spanish for butterfly, garden, swallowtail, Delaware, Delagram, pollinator, pollinator is nature, you name it. You, I could have gone on and added insect. I could have done um, 
different hashtags, but the more the better. Because people look, curate are curating images. They're looking for things that are just butterflies. And so they find you because you're a garden center and you put pictures of a butterfly up. So people find you indirectly. And so for, with extension, we've only had this account a year. We're up to 352. So we're doing okay. Um, but we will... We will tag people. We will use many, many hashtags um, rather than trying to promote our work workshop and say, hey, come. For, and then the other problem with Instagram is you can't hyperlink anything really well. Um, you only have that one hyperlink. So you can't hyperlink in a post the way you can with um, uh, Facebook and Twitter. So that's one of the reasons I don't. Um, I don't promote too much on, on Instagram. So we're 